Putin's forcing reluctant reserves to fight from the safety of his Dhaka hideout. What a dick! This is not my party. Brought to you by The Bulwark. It's been a while since we checked in on Volodymyr Zelensky, our modern-day Sigma male, and his nation's fight against the Russian invaders. Things are looking up. Knock on wood, knock on wood, knock on wood. Earlier this month, Ukraine went on offense, taking back thousands of square miles in the eastern part of the country, including the critical city of Izium and smaller towns throughout the Kharkiv region. It was a devastating strategic loss for Russia because this region connected the parts of the country they controlled together. We'll take back what's ours. In a desperate attempt to stop the bleeding, Putin announced he was calling up 300,000 reservists who are not too thrilled about their new duties to the motherland. I wonder why. As a result, shit is getting dicey for Putin on the home front. Man, Putin, I did it again! There have been attacks on military recruiters, protests in the streets, and thousands of men fleeing the country to avoid conscription. Pop stars and social media influencers are taking risks by speaking out. Russian pop star Ala Pogachova took to Instagram and asked to be listed as a foreign agent. It's not my choice to born in this country. Yesterday, we have sad news about partial mobilization. I don't want to get dropped. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that shit either. Mark Hurtling, the former commanding officer of the U.S. Army in Europe, was on the Borg podcast recently explaining just how this happened. Truthfully, the Russian army is bad. As, <laughs> as Ukraine has gone in one direction in terms of a positive transformation over the last 15 years, the Russian army has deteriorated and gone in the opposite direction. As it turns out, winning a war is about more than manly memes featuring big hunky Russians and rejecting the influence of woke culture. This is news to Ted Cruz, who is getting horny over some Russian military propaganda. Well, that was pretty hot. <laughs> And the bunch of right-wing pundits who constantly whined about our military's crisis of masculinity because to them we're engulfed in some political purge of the military. Right, 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 right. The reality is, after a few high-profile American military bungles, the U.S. engagement in Ukraine has been essentially pitch perfect. The Biden administration has been remarkably successful in balancing their obligations to arm and train the Ukrainians without escalating the war. Great job. Well, let's not start sucking each other's dicks quite yet. Good point. Remember, winter is coming. The military success will have to continue, even as the Ukrainians inevitably tire. And by cutting off the gas pipeline, the Russians are trying to inflict a massive heating crisis on Ukraine and its European allies. European leaders are accusing Russia of sabotaging two underwater gas pipelines in the Baltic Sea. Luckily, the Europeans have been preparing for this. We are asking the member states to reduce by 15% the gas consumption. But there's a concern that support might be dwindling in other areas. The German chancellor is backing off on sending weapons. He says the German armed forces essentially have been stretched thin based on what they have given already. Home, well, that's disappointing. And in Italy, there's a new nationalist and even light fashy prime minister. Now, she's been supportive of the NATO effort to date, but we'll see if that continues. Concerning. And on top of that, Putin is cornered and looking increasingly desperate. So he might be getting an itchy trigger finger on those tactical nukes. Well, that's not good. But all of these threats come from a place of weakness for the Russians and strength for Ukraine and its allies. And the longer that the Russian army flounders, the greater the chance that Putin gets the old push off the balcony treatment that has seemed to befall a staggering number of prominent Russians lately. Another Russian oligarch has mysteriously died. So random. One thing that's for sure, that's a fate that Zelensky or Dark Brandon don't have to worry about. We'll see you next week for more Not My Party. For more weekly episodes of Not My Party, smash that subscribe button.